service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Take a moment and reflect at God's word and examine ourselves. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have loved undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word of God, and by His authority, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again. Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. These are the words of life. Praise be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 6, verses 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised, God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. And he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. These are the words of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise.
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. Anyone who's read the Old Testament knows that God frequently spoke to his people. He talked to Adam and Eve in the midst of the Garden of Eden. He warned Noah personally about the flood that was coming and provided the instructions on how to build the ark. He spoke to Abraham on multiple occasions, calling him out of an idolatry and sending him to a new land on, and testing his faith. He confirmed his covenant with him. He called Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt from a burning bush. And in today's Old Testament reading, God actually stood in front of and spoke to Samuel in the temple. Now the question becomes, why doesn't God do that today? Does God have laryngitis? Have we been doing something wrong? Do we need more flashing lights and pumping brass and emotional praise music? And maybe more, a more inspiring visionary preaching to get God to loosen up? Ironically, God is speaking, but no one is listening. If we believe that in the past God spoke to our forefathers through their prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. When we realize that only half of what Agent Scully in the X-Files said, when she said in the thing that perhaps God is speaking, but no one is listening. Well, she got that quote half right. God is speaking. The question is, are you and I listening? Since technology has given us a multitude of new and innovative ways to commu communicate with each other, more than we've ever had before, there are very few excuses for you and I to be out of touch. More often, if we don't hear what someone is saying because it's because really we don't want to hear we don't want to listen it's called selective hearing whether it's ignoring emails screening phone calls and text or simply putting our headphones on and ignoring everything else going on about us we all practice selective hearing even when we know we shouldn't. And it's nothing new. It's a phenomenon that has gone on since the time uh, began. Israel and Samuel's time had a severe case of it. It wasn't that God was, wasn't speaking. They still had the law. The law that had been given to Moses on Mount Sinai. They had the five books of Moses called the Torah. The problem began with the priest Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas, priests, who instead of following God's word and doing what was right, they decided to use their office to enrich themselves, to fatten their own bellies. In fact, they would take the portion that was supposed to be sacrificed to the Lord, and they would take it for themselves. His sons also robbed the people by demanding their portion first. They took from God, and worst of all, they refused to listen to anyone who tried to correct their sinful ways. They refused to repent. What do you do when you're trying to talk to someone when they and they don't want to listen to you? In the preseason of this last football season, the Green Bay Packers had started. And how many times will you try to get the attention of a diehard fan during a game before you give up? Parents, what do you do after you're told your children for the ninth or tenth time to clean up their toys and they're too busy involved in a video game? Often when we know someone is not listening, we react by refusing to speak. And speaking, 
That's what it is meant to say when it says in the verse that I read earlier from Hebrews, in those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. God was giving Israel the silent treatment. God wanted to speak to his people. He wanted to lead them. He wanted to discipline them, to forgive them, to comfort them, but they refused to listen to God. It was the worst possible thing they could do. Do you and I have listening problems? Do we deserve the silent treatment from God? Numbers tell a sobering story. We have approximately 60 baptized members and about 42 communicant adult members. And yet our average Sunday attendance is somewhere around 20. Yeah, we take a look at percentages, that's not a very good percentage. You know, our confirmands, they said they would endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from God's word. Are they regularly hearing God's word? If you own a business, what would you do if an employee only shows up, say, half the time? Wow, in church, I'm a 50 percenter. In the workplace, that wouldn't be tolerated. Consider what God says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do we ever worry? Do we ever lie? Do we place our trust in earthly leaders? Even when God tells us not to? Do we fail to pray continually? Do we fail to love others as ourselves? Does God's word have a central place in our lives? Does God ever speak and we ignore him? Especially when he has something important to say. Do we have a problem with selective listening or perhaps just as dangerous, selective obedience. Why is the one needful thing often the first thing that gets cut from our schedules? We're all busy, right? Busyness is easy. It's the number one excuse for not hearing, not meditating, not taking the time to study God's word. But busyness, is a cover for the real reason. It's an excuse. Reasons like pride. Pride that says, listen up, Lord, I'm speaking, rather than speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Listen up, Lord. Here's how I want the course of my life to go. Here's how I want my marriage to be. Here's the dream college or school, job, home, career, salary, gift, or blessing that I want. And if you don't give it to me, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to kick you to the curb. Maybe it's anger. The presumption that we are hurting and God doesn't care. God, where were you when my brother died? When my daughter got into a car accident, where were you when I was alone or depressed or panicked? Or maybe my problem is just sheer laziness. Bibles, devotional books, videos, and more, they're all easily accessible, but we're just too lazy to make use of them. In the book, The Screwtape Letters, C.S. Lewis tells the story of a senior demon named Screwtape who writes letters to his demonic nephew named Wormwood, who's just getting in, started in the family business of tempting humans. Screwtape gives him all kinds of sage advice about how to hasten mankind's damnation. In one of the letters, he writes the following. 
It is funny how mortals always picture us as putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is done by keeping things out. If the devil can snatch God's words out of our hearts and minds, then he doesn't need to fill them with all kinds of other voices. Then Israel in the days of Samuel is a cautionary tale for you and I. We deserve for God to give us the silent treatment too, now and for all eternity. And yet, even when we deserve the silent treatment, God in his grace continues to speak. He hasn't taken our word from our homes, or from our churches, or from our country. In fact, it's just the opposite. He speaks to us in more places, in more ways than ever before. God is infinitely more patient with our deafness than we are with one another. Have you ever felt the burden of your sin, the guilt of your disobedience, and not found your Savior standing there, offering you his body and blood, telling you to go in peace, your sins are forgiven? Have you ever desired guidance or peace or comfort and not had access to a Bible? Have you ever come here on Sunday morning and found the parking lot empty and the doors locked? In spite of our selective listening and in spite of our disobedience, God continues to speak to us for only one reason, grace. Grace that is rooted in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is our substitute. He never practiced selective learning and listening. He never ignored his Father's will or decided he knew better. Jesus not only made hearing his Father's word a high priority, he obeyed each and every word of his Father perfectly. And when his Father decided the only way to save the human race was for the Son of God to become man, Jesus left his throne in heaven and took the robe and took on the very nature of a servant. When his father told him the salvation of sinners is only possible if he, Jesus, assumed the guilt of the sins of the world, Jesus sweated blood. Jesus begged for his father to find another way but in the end, he listened and obeyed. When God's plan met an illegal trial, mockery, torture, Jesus endured it all in silence. And when the Father's wrath over our sin demanded that Jesus be nailed to a cross and suffer the depths of hell and give up his earthly life, Jesus went without complaint. Like a lamb to the slaughter. And in his grace, God credits Jesus' perfectly listening skills and obedience to our account. He forgives our deafness and remembers our disobedience no more. In fact, he removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. It's all because that Jesus endured the cold shoulder of God in our place. For Jesus' sake, God still speaks to us. He speaks to us today and every day, year after year, decade after decade, century after century. And when he speaks, he gets results. As we see in the case of Samuel, the fourth time the Lord called to him, he finally listened. And he kept listening, even though the message God had for him was unpleasant. And even though that God was calling him to do wasn't easy, God was calling Samuel to announce his judgment and punishment on his mentor and friend Eli and their sons for their deafness and disobedience. Without question, it would have been much easier for Samuel just to roll over and stay in bed. Humanly speaking, it might have seemed prudent for Samuel to change or even modify God's message to avoid offending and angering Eli. 
But through his word, God gave Samuel faith, not only to listen, but to boldly obey. God criticizes people who do not listen. But God continually speaks to us day by day. He gives us the wisdom to understand that in a noisy world, there's only one voice that we need to listen to. And that is of the Holy Spirit. Not only do we hear his word, but the Holy Spirit enables us to believe it. He guides our lives with his word like a light shining on our path. And like with Samuel, he transforms people like you and I, who are all too often hard of hearing, into his representatives who boldly obey and boldly proclaim his word. No, he doesn't call each and every one of us into public ministry, like he did with Samuel. God doesn't often tell us what we want to hear. He doesn't tell us what's going to make us rich or cause our dreams to come true or to heal our sicknesses here and now. You will search your Bible in vain for promises like that. He does call on each and every one of us to carry out the callings that he has given us. We are husbands who God has been called to love our wives as Christ loved the church. For you wives, whom God has called is to submit to your husband as the Lord submitted to God. We are children whom God has called to obey your parents, for this is right. And parents whom God has called to bring up their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. We are citizens and neighbors, employers and employees, all callings that have come from God. These are all high, hard callings. How can we possibly carry them out? Listen to the following of what the Lord promises. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove you from your heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. God's word has the power to do what none of the other voices that we hear in the world can do. His voice transforms us so that we not only want to listen, but you and I are emboldened to obey. I might not always make sense. I won't always be popular. I will never be politically correct. But God's word, the only voice that you and I should trust in a noisy world. In the book of James, the Lord says the following. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. The Greek philosopher once said that common sense, we have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen twice as much as we speak. And that's good advice regardless of what we do in life. But especially, it is important when God is speaking. Listen to the word of God. He has given it to you in all humility to listen and to enact your faith boldly. To obey his calling. And above all, we thank God for Jesus' sake that he is still speaking to us through his word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. And let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we worship God with our tithes and offerings. Son, lead us into straight paths. 
Bring us out of the bondage of our sins and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you sent John the Baptist, the herald, the coming Messiah, and to proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In these latter days, you send pastors to proclaim the same repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and through them lead your people to trust in your salvation. Look with kindness upon all pastors that they may be diligent and faithful heralds of your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give us rulers who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live peaceably in godly quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. O shepherd of Israel, to our prayers, we ask that you give healing and comfort and perseverance to all who cry out to you, especially Betty Romero, Vern Lake, Lila Briggers, Jason Palmerin, Rosa Sanchez, John Havens, Lee Makowitz, Lori Brody, Marty Brody, Doris Inouye, Aleldon Guzman, and Lindsay Schumer. May they find comfort in your enduring word and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we know that you are not slow in keeping your promises. We thank you for your patience. Do not take your spirit from us when we stray from your commandments, but convict us of our sin and draw us back to you in repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you invite us to, again to your table to receive the medicine of immortality in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. May we receive this sacrament rightly, that with faith strengthened and sins forgiven, our lives may be lived in holiness and godliness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we in the church on earth wait for the coming of your Son, we remember all the saints who have gone before us and who now rest in your presence. Keep us safe in your arms until you gather your people together in the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give you thanks for your boundless love. Show unto us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and the archangel and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
the God of the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance for me. Likewise, when the supper day, if you